Never heard of this. Check this out, brother. There's a disease called penile atrophy. Okay. Penile atrophy or atrophy, whatever they call it. You know, everybody got different dialect. Mm. Penile atrophy or atrophy. I hadn't heard doctor say it. But it's where it's a it's a phenomenon that happens where you give yourself over to alcohol and cigarette smoke or you get a certain type of STD where it will literally shrink your penis. And w within the last, yes, within the last uh, 10 to 12 years, don't quote me on this, y'all. It's I think it's 10 to 12 years where the black community, the man, the men have lost over two inches of width and girth to their dicks. No bull. And that's based off of alcohol. That's based off. They, so when you look at the the studies and the statistics that was done, it was based off of uh, alcohol. It was based off of cigarette smoke, and it was based off of poor eating inside of the black community. Showing you, showing you that things you put in medications, in medications, showing that it's things that that you can put in your body that not only can stop your penis from growing but can actually shrink your penis from where the width and growth you got now and shrink it. But you can get it back with some of those methods that I just yeah, said. I rebuke that. <laughs> you said you rebuke <laughs> in the name of Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man. I rebuke that. <laughs> yeah, man. Hey, it's crazy. I heard That's that. insane. Yeah. yeah. All right. It's, it's, it's one more thing that I want to tap into real quick. Um, but hey, for my brothers out there, look up the wet towel method. I'm going to look it up. As soon as I get off of this, yeah. one more thing that I want to tap into uh, that I was looking at you speak about, and mm. I had to cut it off because I was like, you know what? This is going to mess up my organic conversation. Uh, you were talking about chemotherapy, yes. cancer, and mustard gas. Yes. Right? And you were breaking down, and I don't, I'm going to let you break it down, mm -hmm. but in a general sense, you were breaking down the different um, experiments that were done yes as far as with mustard gas yes and some of the same or the exact same chemicals are used during the chemotherapy the process. exact same chemicals can you ex can you break that down for us a little yeah. bit yeah so if you look at uh germany if you start looking at the nazis yep uh, the nazis was creating uh, uh basically biological engineered weapons uh against the uh, the german uh jewish coverts correct you know what i'm saying because they, yeah, they, yeah, yeah, they were germans yeah. uh but anyways what happened was uh during that war when uh adolf hitler and his nazi regime was uh killing all of them in them concentration camps mm -hmm. they had hired this certain company that's still here today it's called bayers bayers actually hmm. man, really yeah yeah, Bayer's is a German company. If I you start looking up the pharmaceutical companies, a lot of these pharmaceutical companies started in actual Germany. And uh, what they were doing was they started off as azo dye companies where they created certain types of dyes uh, to turn your, your sweater brown, to mm -hmm. make this couch black. Uh, the, the, comp the, the industry started getting so saturated where they said, you know what? Instead of making azo dye now, we're going to start making uh, synthetic pharmaceutical uh, products to mm -hmm. sell. Uh, so they started making all these different types. Bears was one of them. They changed. They just now changed the name to uh, Bear. Mm -hmm. But anyways, what happened was this company, all the companies, is a, it was a pan German banker. Notice the pharmaceutical companies is always connected to the banking industry. That's where you get the Carnegie, yep. J.P. Morgan, yep. Rockefeller Bank. All of these are because the banks is what back the pharmaceutical companies. So check this out. This is what they did. Right. So the the market was being too saturated. So they said, we need to find something else that's very, 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 you know, great. So a pan-German created this pan-German company called IG Farben. Y'all okay. can look this up, IG Farben. It will blow your mind. IG Farben was a pharmaceutical company and an azodot company. It was called a German pharmaceutical azodot company. And it consisted of like 14 to 20 other small azodot and pharmaceutical companies. They put them all together. Well, during the Nazi war, what they did was Adolf Hitler hired IG Farben. They hired IG Farben to come work for them. Guess what these chemists was doing? They was creating something called Zyklon B. Zyklon, I know about B, Zyklon B. Yes, yep. it's a chemical weapon. Yep. Right? Yep. Well, they was creating another weapon, right? Which was Zyklon B B2. And they used these things to gas the actual German converts who 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 turned Jewish. Mm -hmm. They was killing them in the concentration camps. Yeah. Right. Well, after the war was over with, they had, you know, crimes against humanity, the Norman Bird trial. You heard of all of that. They were sentencing people to death, locking them up for the rest of their life. Yeah. Guess who took a trip out there to the trial? Henry Kissinger. 
did he? Man, look it oh, up, man. I didn't know that. Oh, man, I connected the dots, boy. So check this out. So he went out there during the deposition or the motion of discovery uh, when they was actually charging them with their crimes and telling them what they was charged with. Uh, Zyklon B got pulled up and the mustard gas got pulled up and the ingredients. These were files. These are yeah. documents that was pulled up. So... I don't know why he went out there, you know what I'm saying? But he did go out. It's not allegedly. He went, he took his ass out there and he came back. Allegedly, now it's allegedly. Allegedly, he came back with the actual ingredients to make Zyklon B in the ingredients to actually make mustard gas. And this is how it have to, it got to be possible because not even 10 years after he came back with the evidence, you have chemo immunotherapy now mm. this is where it gets interesting there because if you look up the actual ingredients to chemotherapy it's a hundred percent mustard grass uh mustard gas zyklone b derivatives a hundred percent common google google the ingredients of chemotherapy it will say a hundred percent mustard grass mustard gas derivatives yeah so the u.s went over to a place participated in wars wars or crimes against humanity they're supposed to be over there supporting you know the good of mm -hmm. that place come back with something now all of a sudden mustard gas that killed hundreds of thousands of, of jewish, jewish people. people it's now being used to administrate as a treatment for mutation cells in america yeah the same fucking drug and then you look at the side effects mm. that's actually coming from this thing and the note that you have to sign before you go to chemotherapy and you read the blueprints and the fine lines and it tells you that there's a likely chance that your ass can die from it. Yeah. But they psychologically wear and tear on your fear factor so much that you and the promotions you're and the propaganda, you're going to sign up for it because you think that this is the only way out. Yeah. But you are so far into European culture and not into your own culture, because if you go into your culture, ancient medicine been around for 64,000 years. If we talk about Ayurvedic medicine, 4,000 years. Let's not talk about ancient Egyptian or ancient Kemet medicine. 10,000 years at the least mm -hmm. where they were healing things. They're, they, If you look on a hieroglyph, they pulling teeth out. We got we got Kemet. We got Egyptians <laughs> with braces. Braces, gold teeth. Yeah, They doing brain surgery in Egypt. And then you have papyruses that they're digging up when they finding mummies. Tutaka Moon, they dig up his pirate. He got herbal books with all herbs in there that grow out here naturally. Yeah. So we can't act like that medicine is new. Yeah. But this new pharmaceutical medicine is only around 100 years old and it's all synthetic. And then you start looking at it. These things were made of the same ingredients that was over there killing Germans. That's insane. In our medicine today. So let's talk about chemotherapy. It's 100% yeah. mustard grass, uh, mustard gas derivatives mm -hmm. when you look at it on a potential hydrogen so when you look at food or you look at anything that have carbon hydrogen and oxygen it emits a certain hydrogen from it hydrogen per items uh, hydrogen per bonds whatever these bonds is is going to make it acidic or is going to make it alkaline from one to six it's acidic seven is neutral from seven to 14 is alkaline mm -hmm. things die in an acidic medium but things are uh, things tend to uh to grow and Things tend to live uh, a long life expectancy in an alkaline medium. Mm -hmm. uh, things have a short life expectancy and, and give over themselves to mutation, fungus, and mold growth and, and build up when you in actual acid. Mm -hmm. So in chemistry, I'm a biochemist. So in chemistry, we call it acid and base. Right. So base is alkaline. That's what things live at. That's where things are regrown. You get into uh, rejuvenation, that's regeneration life. is life. Mm -hmm. Things that are in the acidic side, that's the gnarly side. Yeah. Burning, stinking, death, corpse. I mean, mucus, just it smells too. this shit stinks. It smells like sulfur oxide. Mm. All right. So if you look at the potential hydrogen, remember, between one and six is acidic. Mm -hmm. Seven is neutral in between. 8 and 14 is actual alkaline. Yep. If you look at chemotherapy on the potential hydrogen scale, it's at a 1.5. Mm. 